If you're looking to sell or buy cheap CSGO skins, check out bitskins.com. Hello, welcome to Titan Games. Today I want to talk to you guys about uh, long control on Dust 2 and more importantly what to do after you've got control of long and you've got control of pit. Uh, I've not done um, a tip video in a good long time and because I'm in a team now I'm doing all this with the team. So I thought I'd share it with you guys because I find this stuff really interesting and it's always fun to uh, you know look behind like the strategy of the game. So uh, what we want to do on long is just to take control of pit, get the AWP into pit, have four players go through long and one player just lurking uh, towards the lower tunnel. Now I'm just going to do this like off the fly so you can, can just learn it as I go along. It's not going to be a structured video but I'll do my best to uh, make sure you guys understand the plan. So basically what you want to do is just have like two smokes for the um, for long. This one's like so. And if we check these, it's going to be a wall of smoke. So this is what I like to call pit control. Easy way of getting pit control. These two smokes and then a really cool flashbang. This flashbang uh, that I've showed you is probably going to be the most effective flashbang that you can possibly do. Uh, this has been in my on one of my CSGO nade spot videos for a while. So basically you just find this, um, you get into this corner first of all, find this dark spot on the wall, just aim up slightly, throw the flash, and profit. Old school, old school. But basically if, if you're in pit like this, you're not gonna, if you're facing like any anyone normally would, just this common angle, you, you won't see the flash come over here because it's not appearing at any point. So this is like the perfect pot flash for pit. And I'll also show you that it does blind all these other positions. It blinds um, at blue. I'll just I'll, I'll re-demonstrate it. So I'll throw it and then I'll move into the position. So I've actually got it bound. So anyone close will also be blind. Flashback. So this guy is going to be fully white. As you come out the door, you don't have to worry about him. He's going to be blind. I'll show you this one just here. So if anyone's just hiding blue, the flash comes over like this. This guy's going to be fully blind. And obviously in the pit, they're going to be fully blind. The only thing like on the corner, if they're holding maybe like this gap, they're still going to see it come over, but they're just going to have to fall off. As well as the the uh, the smokes are going to be here here anyway, so you're going to have easy long control. The only points you have to worry about as you come out with that flash is someone playing here, because uh, this position is not going to be blinded at all, and you just have to simply have three of your players come out, and whoever flows throws the flash comes out last. Clear the pit, clear the corner, and what you want to do whilst the smokes are still up, remember there's a wall of smoke here, um, get the AWP into the pit, that's what you want to do first of all, and just make sure no one's going to be pushing through these smokes whilst this is happening, because it does happen, uh, it's, ha it's happened uh, a number of times actually in professional games, as well as uh, our amateur games, like people have just randomly flash pushed through the smoke and people have been caught off by it, so you have to be wary of that, maybe that the last person who's coming through the door who threw the flash, just be like wary of like anyone trying to push through the smoke whilst your team is uh, clearing close and clearing pit. So once you've got the AWP into pit, this is like the next stage of the strategy, you want to have um, a basic thing, so I'll just show you the smokes, so we're going to do two smokes, this is what Liquid have done, I was going to do this in a strategy breakdown video but just haven't got the, the time or I haven't got around to doing it, um, strategy breakdown videos take a long time, these type of videos are a lot faster, so we have two smokes, one for short and we have one for CT, now the purpose of these smokes is to like isolate anyone out on the site area and um, I'll show you why as we move up. So basically we want to take it methodically and bearing in mind when you when you do those two smokes you have like a set time frame, you've got 15 seconds or so to actually execute out into the A site and get your shit done. So you have to be relatively fast and just know what you're doing. So the, the orbs are going to be in pit already, those two smokes are going to be thrown. Now the AWP doesn't need to really challenge too much, he just needs to look first box like at this gap and make sure like he's not going to be peeking this side. Your riflers that are going to come up, so you've got three riflers, assuming no one's died in the perfect scenario. Um, your riflers are going to come up and let's just get a rifle for the sake of demonstrating this. So the riflers come up, you've got two entry fraggers, they're going to have to clear the car. You don't need any nades to be used on the car. Car and uh, they just sit here 
both the entry fraggers are sitting there. And then you have one um, player sat back here. This is what I do personally. This is the Molotov that I do. And this is going to be landing for the first box. So we have a Molly for first box. And we also have the second guy that's behind the entry fragger throwing the Molotov for the, um, for the second box. So what happens with this is you clear out anyone on the site for the first box and the second box. The only place they can be is at quad or in the elevator. And in these, these positions they have to be super passive and they can't really do much to stop you getting onto the site. But what you want to do anyway is sort of bait them to like face you. They'll like push short and they'll probably push up CT through the CT smoke. Um, and obviously what you're going to do then is have a flash thrown from the, uh, the AWP. Because the AWP's sitting back pla uh, or in pit. He's looking for the first box. Once that Molotov is thrown for the first box, if he sees anyone jump out, he can get a kill. Um, hopefully he gets the kill. If not, it doesn't matter. The guy's going to jump back anyway. And this gives him the freedom to actually just pull out a flashbang and um, just throw a flash all the way up there like so. And on that flashbang, everyone's going to be coming out off the back of it. Simply just like coming out, flash goes up, and they're just facing. Anyone here is going to be blind. The smoke lands roughly here. So like they have not got much time to dodge that. I mean, you can throw a better flashbang than that. You can get it perfect, so it's not always like that. It can be a pot flash properly. Um, I don't personally throw the flash, uh, or prefer that one. Um, but yeah. They have to be in this position, they have to be running out, the flash is going to wreck them, they're going to be fully blind and your entry fraggers are going to come straight through, get the kill and obviously they can't be on the site, can't be here, only positions are quad and, uh, quad and elevator. So it's super easy actually to clear the site this way, really methodical, uh, obviously once you get onto the site, um, plant the bomb, plant the bomb for plat and you've already got an orc who is in the perfect position at plat ready to play the after plant and basically secure the round. I mean at this point the the rotations are gonna probably come through short and CT and uh, you should have I think of course you got the lurker the lurker at this point like the whole round he literally just has a rifle and he sat here um, doesn't have to do much it's only on the after plant position like he can even let them come up short just give them short and then maybe just do a big flank up short whilst the bomb is planted. But I do prefer it if they go through CT and flank this way and get a really big flank on all the other players that are worried about like rotating through the smoke or like coming through late and trying to win that way. So there you go guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed this, hope you find that useful. I know it's um, it's a lot of information and it's probably probably a longer video than I usually do for these quick tips. but. Um, I don't know, hopefully it's uh, useful for you guys, there's a little something you can do. Team Liquid did this actually against Fnatic, the exact same thing, except they didn't do the, the, the pit control, they just did standard one smoke on the corner and flash over. Um, but I just think the pit control is um, something you can do that just secures long basically, it makes it really hard for anyone to help their teammate who's stuck in pit, because it's a normal setup that people do. Um, I'll show you one smoke actually, that is pretty interesting. You can do it with the um, so you can do the wall of smoke, but you can also have a gap in one of the one of the smokes, like so. So we tried this for a little bit in our team. I know Mouse Sports did this, and uh, they had a gap here. So basically, what this means is if they're if they're pushing through, they have to like run through the smoke. But I think. I think there's a way of throwing it better than this, but um, what happened when we tried to do it, uh, people just like, they had a rifle here obviously, but it, it, we were just getting picked as we, were, as we were crossing into pit, so we scrapped that, we're just going to do like the standard smokes on the floor and uh, keep it like that, but there's something you can think about if you want to do it that way. So I hope you enjoyed guys, thank you very much for watching, let me know if you want to see more of this type of content, um, and I'll see you guys next time.